guys thanks for being here uh, we should uh, wait for a minute uh, for uh, people to join us so we can start then yes absolutely thanks all right i think uh, i should still say cool hat billy <laughs> thank you mate you know may i've got a closet full of them yeah and i've i've seen them you know <laughs> last actually, three three and a half years almost yeah actually um my uh my three year old son now uh wears all my hats so i have competition <laughs> So, um, uh, may, not sure if Bharat knows, but Billy and I we used to work together in our last oh, company. Okay. That's yeah. where uh, Apoor and Billy got connected over a video call, and yep. they had a, had a long chat about marketing and branding and uh, you know promoting a brand across uh, APAC India globally. Yeah, cool. it was probably the, um, the 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 most insightful um, interview I did. So thank you. Uh, I think the initiative was uh, 50 marketers in 50 days. In 50 days. I hope you yeah. covered all 50. I did. I did. It was exhausting, but we had it, mate. <laughs> nice. Nice. Great. All right. So I think uh, we should start considering uh, everyone has given their valuable time over a weekday. So appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we hope it's a good time investment for all of us. Uh, for me, it's, I'm very sure about it. I keep learning from these guys anyway. But uh, uh, quick background about how uh, it, uh, it started. So what we are planning to do here is uh, this will be a series of uh, talk shows. Let me not call it a webinar because there are thousands of webinars out there. But uh, we want to keep it. Uh, uh, the idea was uh, that I was having a chat with Apurva. Uh, one day and we talked about that there is a lot of content being discussed about marketing, about marketeers, about uh, branding and, and um, uh, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, a lot of talk shows, webinars, content, but not much around enterprise sales. Uh, let me put it that way. So then we decided why not we, we get up ourselves and, and just do it. So that's how the idea came to us and then we immediately reached out to Billy and Bharat. Now, what we have today on the panel is three sales leaders from very different uh, regions. So Apurva lives in uh, Delhi, uh, Bharat lives in Bangalore, Billy lives in Melbourne. Uh, they have a, a quite similar background working with enterprise clients, but very different uh, uh, way of looking at things and which is why uh, we thought it would be a great idea to, to, to have a mixed panel. Uh, what I would recommend is uh, 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 all of you on this call today, uh, whoever wants to connect with them directly, please feel free to do so on LinkedIn and Twitter. They're quite active on social media. They are quite open and they are uh, really good mentors if you can reach out to them in the right way. They would be always willing to help. Uh, the format of today's chat is will you guys can can post your questions on the chat box and what we'll do towards the end of the talk show, about 15 minutes, we would love to take up the questions. So that's how it uh, will be. Now, uh, pleasure uh, to have them here. Welcome on board. Uh, moving on to uh, you, Apurva, we would love to hear a quick intro about you. And then, uh, yeah, we'll move to Billy. Hi everyone, uh, to all our audience logging in from around the world, this is Apoorv Chamadeya. Uh, I'm the Chief Revenue Officer at Gain. It's one of the top software as a service firms in the world focused on travel and hospitality. And we focus on three things. We use ML, AI and data sciences to do pricing recommendations. So if you see the price of that last seat change, you know it's us. Uh, second thing we do is distribution for rates and inventory globally. And third thing is we do a lot of digital marketing, programmatic marketing for uh, luxury hotels. Pleasure to be here and thank you Vijayan for this fantastic initiative. Looking forward to talking to you, Billy and Bharat. 
Thank you, Apoor. Thanks. Uh, Billy, over yes. to you. Thank you, mate. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for having me, uh, Vijayant. Um, my name is Billy Luizu. I am the, uh, the Vice President of Go to Market at Cheetah Digital. Um, I, uh, I Look, I fell into sales. Let's be completely honest. I'm a designer and marketer by trade, and I pride myself in, in solving customer problems and being a consultant. Um, at the heart, Cheetah Digital is the market leader in messaging solutions and loyalty solutions. And we help all our clients, whether it be an acquisition strategy or the way through to consumer loyalty. So our, our goal is to help companies get the most out of their data. And a time like today, I think it's quite an important one that we all need to try and solve and be and, and do a better job at. So thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Thanks, Willie. Look forward. Bharat. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you so much uh, Vijayan for having me here. Uh, I'm the founder of uh, Live the Sport Life. It's a sports management firm based out of Bangalore. We work exclusively with a particular Kabaddi franchise called as Bengaluru Bulls. We work very closely with MS Dhoni on various projects. I've been in the sports industry for over 15 years and I've actually worked with various Indian cricketers and trained them in my previous stint as the coach of uh, National Cricket Academy. Uh, Great learning from both Apurva and Billy. I look forward to chatting with you guys. Thanks, Bharat. Do you miss Bangalore traffic? Never. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's a good change for all of us. Uh, it feels uh, good to be wearing a formal T-shirt and a watch today. So thanks to you guys. <laughs> I also shaved. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, now we'll... Uh, uh, a, a very interesting uh, survey that I did on LinkedIn uh, with my connections. And it was more about asking the sales reps and the sales managers and the sales leaders about what do they feel about uh, their prospects, their, their sales pipeline, you know, what is the right approach? Uh, quite, ex you know, as we expected, 65% of the audience said that they want to they would rather invest time in understanding the client's business goal. Uh, we are in a situation which is very different. Nobody anticipated uh, back in February. Uh, we, we, none of us knew this is going to happen. So things have changed. I'm sure our sales strategy would have also changed. Uh, as sales leaders, we need to be flexible. But none of us would have expected that we need this flexibility as much as we need it now. Uh, also in, in as little as time, as, as little time as we got. There was no heads up, it just came to us. And uh, Apurva, your set of clients, they are like doing zero business almost. You, you work very closely with the hospitality industry and you know, hotels, uh, airlines, booking sites. Uh, now, uh, what is the right sales approach that you feel for, you could have a large sales team, but what is the right sales approach that you would take as a sales leader and you would advise to everyone? Thank you, Vijayan. So our industry is almost like the ground zero for COVID because uh, travel and hospitality industry in the world. That said, you know, uh, I am very, very excited about the possibilities this whole crisis uh, opens up to us. And I've been telling my sales team that Never let a good crisis go wasted. So we sell, market, uh, and resell in more than 100 countries globally, while on-ground sales teams are only in 15, 16 countries. Um, and you know, traditional enterprise sales, B2B sales, has always been about going, meeting people at trade shows, events, uh, doing in-person calls. And hospitality especially is an industry where I always say it's more about a hug than a handshake. So it's a very, very relationship driven industry where people love having a glass of wine with you, uh, knowing you over years, and that's what results in buying. So when this crisis started unfolding, frankly, it was a massive shock to the whole industry and to us at Regain. But since then, I think we've really figured out a model where we are you know, trying to add value to the community and I've been telling my team that don't sell, add value. 
forget that you are sales people you are now a value added manager and it's all about how do you create value for the community and how do you show empathy to customers and you know provide connections to them a lot of our customers are losing their jobs so how can you connect them to other people who can help them find jobs we launched the initiative called better tomorrow where all of us you know volunteered whatever expertise we had to hotels which were shut or not doing well and we said you know online you can just use this link to book a one hour slot with us and before that answer these questions and we will do free consulting to help you recover so we offered between you know 30 40 of us more than 1000 hours of free consulting and i think uh, we are creating a lot of goodwill uh, for uh, rate gain as a company uh, and us individually which is going to really really help us as the market starts recovering so this is not the time to sell this is the time to empathize connect build relationships add value and sales is automatically going to happen quite interesting uh, you mentioned this is not the time to sell we have a question around that and we'll come to that because that's the kind of question our uh, our participants and everyone out there would love to hear i mean if being a sales uh, uh, professional myself uh, this is something that i would love to hear from all of you right uh, so uh, bharat you have uh, uh, i'm sure you would have a very different sales approach in today's times and you know i'm sure ms dhoni would be pressurizing you to get more deals but how do you deal with it uh one is categorization of uh, let's say growth industry and probably forecast ourselves in looking at which are the industries which are looking at let's say growth in the coming few quarters and years uh, that would be one aspect of it and two as i told you earlier uh, there are other verticals to the ms dhoni project apart from that we actually have we work with various indian cricketers as well uh, so we recently cracked a uh, an endorsement contract for mr rohit sharma and uh, during covid times so a it can be a, an opportunity to increase the pitch from our side and probably go after industries which actually are looking at growth there are several categories of industries which are looking at growth so let's focus on that and the second aspect is of course relationship selling uh, there are uh, various ways in terms of uh, you could say manage the client especially yeah. ipl being a speculative subject right now so that could be one of the ways to actually engage with the client on one side and understand the client's budgets needs and probably accommodate certain digital aspects of it and things like that so that the client can do certain things with limited budget and probably he would have forecasted uh, could say lesser top lines so so that means uh, right prospecting categorizing your uh, possible clients mm -hmm. and then uh, understanding their immediate requirements so so a short term approach versus a long term approach can be different but we need to have both in place because apurva looked like fo he focused on the on a long term approach mid to long term because of the nature of the 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 prospects on the industry that they work with and for you it's uh, both yes uh, yeah. billy uh, uh, are we in the same boat or are we in the same storm together what is it <laughs> yeah mate probably the same storm different boat um yeah. i'd say look i think I've, from what i from what the two have ex have explained i'm i'm in a very similar camp right we as sales leaders your your number your budget or your quota doesn't change it stays and you're still trying to have a effective in what is a very uh tough climate so being empathetic like a purvis said is very important i look at it as two things um you know one the right sales approach you should be able to answer why should i buy now and what is the buying process um if i say you know why should i buy now yeah i think finding a the territories that have not been affected in this climate of is a short term approach you look at fmcg or cpg um they're making record sales so why you know they they've got more eyeballs than they've ever had before <clears throat> so why why would you not look at an acquisition and data strategy to communicate with your customers 
um, they're never going to have peaks like this again. So we've, we've tried to be very methodical in our approach. So we've looked at territories which are thriving that we can still have a communication with in the short term. Um, and we've altered our buying process. So it's very much a digital and online experience. So a lot of businesses look at the sales funnel and you think of awareness, consideration, purchase and use. It's, it's the same funnel. It's just that the top, the first three phases are digital, right? So you're trying to have, you have to figure out how to build utility to get customers or consumers to, to still engage with your brand. Um, and then when you look at the other side of it, when you look at um, the long-term approach in sales, like, like you still want to build relationships. You still want to stay true to your values. You still want to make sure that you're communicating with marketers who may be unemployed, but still want a, they still want to be educated on latest technology, latest marketing trends. So we're running webinars and our webinars is not directed at short-term revenue. It's long-term revenue. It's more about keeping people engaged for when they do find that right job that they consider cheater as a potential partner. So yeah, I think you've got to be pretty methodical in the approach, but we're seeing a lot more quality of opportunities, maybe not as, not as much quantity. Right. Good insight. Uh, I, I uh, truly believe in uh, everything that you just said. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's all about implementing them in the right way sure. and also about uh, the priority. But I think uh, pretty much the, the very same priority for all of us as sales leaders. So thanks for that. Uh, now, Billy, how do you... Uh, you, you mentioned webinars and you know, a lot mm -hmm. of content out there, but still uh, anything else that you uh, currently think of doing for your sales pipeline, your prospects, how do you keep them engaged? How would you want your sales team to keep them yeah. engaged? So it, it could be any specific, uh, of course, I don't want to, want, want <laughs> you to share, share your secret sales uh, yeah. strategy or marketing. Sacred sales. Yeah. Uh, look, um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a consultant and I, I never really truly believe that selling is the right approach either. Um, so I'm always about adding value and it's, you know, working at value first. I'm pretty sure you guys understand that too. So in today's market where it, it's all about education, um, we know the problems are being amplified under the current climate. So where these webinars that we're running um, are, you know, about how do you identify loyal customers? How do you acquire first party data? But we're donating dollars that for people attending to COVID relief. So we raised $1,200 in our last webinar. And we look at running about the same in our next webinar. So $20 per attendee. And we're giving it to these relief funds. Um, so there's also like, there's a cause behind what we're doing. Um, but it's always, it's all very educational, right? We're trying to, we're trying to guide people through this ambiguity. Other things that we're doing is, you know, we're sending out, we're still sending out ABMs. So ABMs are account-based marketing strategies. So we have clients who are working from home and working from home with three crazy kids, right? Like it's hard. It's not, it's not as easy. It's not as effective as, as tapping your colleague on the shoulder and getting work done. So we're sending them packs. We're sending them packs to people's homes, you know, audio books, wine, things to keep free, <laughs> stress-free, we're very much still trying to, while we're educating, we're still trying to build those real relationships through just ABM plays. Pretty cool. Thanks, Billy. Bharat, uh, what, what about you? Uh, how do uh, you keep them engaged? Uh, basically, pick up. I mean, usually in sports, it's the promoters, the chairmen the CEOs who basically A, engage and B, actually look at closing the entire deal. So we basically, I mean, uh, we take phone calls, probably we have increased the number of phone calls during this period, unlike other people, and just listen and probably engage with them regarding IPL, because it's a very speculative game that IPL is playing, whether it's happening, whether it's happening in India, or whether it's happening with the crowds, or whether it's happening in a different country. So we basically keep them engaged. And in the middle of the phone call, they usually tend to have some requirements or whether they already have a brand ambassador and they would like to legitimize it by utilizing them across various geographies. 
so these sort of free consulting we tend to give so that they don't increase the uh, investments in a brand ambassador but utilize the brand ambassador probably in the digital content and these sort of things we suggest them uh, to increase the spending on let's say digital so that is what we are doing as well so then why don't you tell us is ipl happening this year or not <laughs> i have no idea okay you wanted to say something more but we'll keep it uh, <laughs> under the closet for now right uh, apurva for you it uh, i can imagine it must be a very different uh, 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 you know difficult uh, initially but everyone accepted the way it is uh, so now it's a different time period altogether uh, what about you i mean considering your uh, clients or your prospects would be under a lot of stress uh so how do you deal with how 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 would you guide your team to keep them engaged so you know what i have been telling the team is you know usually in a good time you monitor things like what is the pipeline creation what is the uh, what are the various stages what is the time taken to close a deal and stuff like that i think uh in the very short term for the next 2 3 months we have changed the things we are focusing on and the metrics we are measuring so the new metrics which i am very focused on what are the new conversations we are starting uh how many clients we are engaging with at a scene level on a weekly basis uh either through marketing like inviting them to be a webinar panelist uh or getting them to uh join you know us on industry initiatives research papers white papers and personally i have been and all my sales leaders have been reaching out to a lot of colleagues in the industry and we don't call them customers now we call them colleagues because we like to think we are all in the same boat and that boat is business is down so we are i think covid has been a great leveling ground uh and i think it has allowed us to connect with customers in a amazing fashion because we've been able to get calls with everybody who's at home and is at sea level uh, far more easily than in normal times and enough to offer suggestions on what are they doing in their business how are they changing what can others learn from them and that's allowed us to connect with them on a far far deeper fashion so the conversations i have have been having with my team is what can we do to understand the new normal so and our marketing team has been doing a great job working with sales leaders on the ground to create a common understanding in the industry what does the new normal mean and then what are the recovery strategies so for hotels you know we published a playbook on how can social media help you recover from this crisis and uh, what are the strategies you can follow so these white papers playbooks are really really helping us a lot in getting traction and uh, there were also questions around should we reset the targets uh, but what use will target setting have if every week is new and every month is new you're never going to get it right so we finally told the people that we will set targets but every month we will have a very open and honest conversation that do the targets need to go up go down or remain the same uh because as the economy starts recovering and hotels and airlines start opening up again the targets might need to go up so very very interesting phase a uh, new set of challenges for us as sales leaders including how do you keep the team motivated we as sales people love to go out meet customers share a drink play a round of golf and suddenly you know for last 3 months we are all spending all the time on zoom so how do you keep the team motivated and we've been having a lot of um, regular zoom calls between teams but also you know fun calls on fridays so every friday evening the whole sales team opens a bottle of beer or a glass of wine and gets on zoom we play some music we call one of our in house guys who plays as the dj and we call it a zero dollar call so we don't talk shop but just you know connect with each of other us as human beings that's also helping a lot nice i am already under pressure my my team would be thinking about it because so far we have been having our calls over coffee yeah right okay thanks apurva uh, so then another question uh, uh, 
this leads to another question you, you know we are all doing a lot of things we are trying to keep our uh, customers and prospects engaged in a very different in our own way right i mean everyone has their own signature style but do you also think that uh, uh, we should also take a pause like is it too late now uh, we should get back to normal like when when is the right time for a sales rep uh, and this is specifically for a sales rep somebody who has about 15 uh, good prospects in the pipeline and stage 2 4 6 there is an equal distribution and one deal is about to be closed how much to change somebody when to take a pause and apurva if you want to take that up first and then i will move to billy because billy has a smile already looks like his favorite question Look, Apur, I, sorry, sorry, I Billy. Yeah, I can kick it off. Yeah. Look, yes. I um, we we ran we ran our webinar for loyal and loyalty. It uh, would have been um, two months ago, or yeah, about two months ago, and we had 160 people register, and we had a very good attendee attendee base. And when you finish those webinars, typically what you do is you look at who who attended, who didn't attend, and you go through some form of um, outreach process, which allows you to book in a meeting um, to understand the state of play. And we we knew a lot of people that were attending this webinar weren't in a position to to have a phone call to purchase right any technology, and that's just the reality of the situation we're in. While we like to believe that technology is the silver bullet for this pandemic, doesn't mean companies have the budget. So we we did not call. We had uh, a no call policy, um, and we felt like it was it was quite intrusive and quite a nag to get people to call throughout this time. Um, what I heard from a lot of the industry actually was that people who are calling um, are getting answered. Like CMOs are picking up the phone and having conversations because I think they're just happy to talk to someone, and they're you know. <laughs> Um, which we've been running as normal, all through Zoom calls, and I, and I saw a question come up around how do you still tell stories through without face-to-face -face value? You can still do that effectively through digital, um, but we have taken a pause, and we are looking at can, at starting back up, um, or we have just started back up um, to try and, and engage, and we're going to get a, a read on the market. If the market is not returning its the favour, then we're going to slow down on the calls as well, but. Um, we did take a pause for about three months. Right. Thanks, Billy. Bharat, uh, how about you? Uh, we haven't taken the pause yet. Uh, fortunately, we have uh, other verticals opening up in sports, so we tend to focus on newer verticals which are actually coming up. Uh, so we tend to. probably look at sponsorship there and the clients also want to engage digitally so we haven't taken the pause uh, quite simply because india is a very complex market and there are categories which are doing pretty well and uh, since bangalore for example as a i mean karnataka as a market has opened up a month ago and other other states in india have actually opened up uh we tend to focus on these geographies and see which are the clients which want to look at campaign management and look at digital campaigns so we haven't taken the pause uh quite simply because it is tough in the sports genre to take a pause uh yes there are speculations about various sports whether it's ipl whether it's pro kabaddi league whether it's happening or not but there are other products that we actually sell that is brand endorsement with various cricketers so we haven't taken the pause to be honest all right good to hear that this is uh, something positive uh, but yeah i mean different situations for different businesses totally understandable apurv how about you you know i like to think of the current crisis as a chicane in formula 1 track the chicane is for those of you who don't follow formula 1 it's a turn it's a bend and the difference between good drivers and average drivers is good drivers actually accelerate on a chicane and the reason is after a chicane you have a straight ahead it's a straight 
track that you can accelerate on. And this one tenth of a second makes the difference between the first finish on a podium and the fifth finish on a podium. So COVID is nothing but a chicane for us salespeople who are really passionate about growing the business. And we've actually accelerated rather than taking a pause. So if you actually see the throughput of our sales and marketing teams and customer service teams, it's been phenomenal. And uh, the motivation levels are at an all time high. The connects with customers are very deep and very authentic. Uh, that whole posturing between a salesperson and a customer has really gone down. That wall between, you know, he's trying or she's trying to sell me something has gone down. And we're actually connecting at a very, very humane, uh, deeper uh, level. So I, I don't think we've taken any pause. We've accelerated and the energy is at an all time high. So that's the silver or gold lining in this crisis for us. Yeah, yeah, quite, quite literally. And uh, if I may also add analogy from cricket, this is like, uh, you know, because of bad weather. Now we suddenly have the change. Duckworth Lewis is in play. Situation have, has changed. The roles would have to be changed. The batting order or bowling order would have to be changed. Everyone needs to move fast, think fast, change their strategy, still be able to finish the match and still go for that win. Uh, nothing hey, else hey, is in, um, uh, under control. That's yeah. a brilliant analogy and I think we are all pressing for the win. Exactly. That's how it should be. Except for when it's in India versus Australia. Uh, would always love to see India win. But that's all right. <laughs> Go for it, mate. You can have the win. <laughs> all right. So uh, then very important. Uh, 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 this is uh, uh, for individuals, all of us, uh, not only sales, but pretty general. What are the investments in self-learning or enablement that you guys as sales leaders recommend uh, to your team? Uh, and also, uh, what as sales leader, what would you uh, do for your sales team to help them enable? And anybody can take this question up. This is, yeah. Yeah, look, uh, Ajay, we, um, you know, I spoke before about um, quantity versus quality. We've been very kind of, we've been very focused on really understanding your territory. So while you want to accelerate around that turn, you want to make sure you're accelerating um, and you don't have any blind spots. And we've, we've been very clear on which industries that we're targeting for short, short term revenue and which industries we're putting back on the back burner. So when we talk about investment in sales or enablement or individuals, we're, we're, we're investing in, in the concept of value selling and value selling into specific verticals. So turning our sales reps into consultants in specific business problems. That's the first piece. The second piece is, um, you know, we're looking at um, training on how people can deal with the pressures that the COVID environment is actually giving them. So things like, um, you know, I guess, it's really hard to be effective and you feel like it's really hard to be effective in a current climate like this. So we're looking at um, resilience training, you know, so how people can weather the storm. Um, we're looking at um, uh, online sales and digital training. So how do you run an effective sales process through Zoom calls? Um, we're looking at gratitude training. So how to be, you know, grateful and, you know, kind of had a, a when I moved into sales, I, I looked at the quarterly pressures that we put ourselves in to hit these numbers. And the most effective sales reps that I saw were the ones that could balance the pressure with their personal life. Um, so some of the training we're trying to bring in is how to practice, you know, you know, meditation as an example. So, you know, how to be able to put yourself and, and be, be in the moment to be the most effective. So, you know, it's a balance of, of say effective sales training and then stress management and how to manage that training um, is where we're, we're really trying to invest our time right now because who knows how long we're going to be working from home um, with that proper human interaction in a typical sales environment. Awesome. 
Apoorv, uh, how are you uh, taking that? You know, from a training perspective, uh, you know, we are doing multiple things. I think when you are interacting with clients and on phone or video calls or Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Google Hangouts, uh, very small things like training people to always keep their cameras on. Uh, and the reason why you should always keep your cameras on is it focuses the customer on you. It also encourages the customer to keep their camera on so that you can read body language. 60-70% communication is non-verbal. So yeah. if you're not doing face-to-face -face calls and your camera is off and the customer's camera is off, pretty much you're flying blind. Or it's like two blind people trying to find a black elephant in a dark room. So small things like training sales teams to consciously keep their camera on, I think it also increases the attention and focus you can apply to the conversation if your camera is on. Second thing is, uh, how do you actually uh, move the conversation when the customer is, customer or the prospect could actually be very pessimistic about the business environment. Uh, it's like trying to engage and connect with someone and offer value when the person thinks the building is burning and it's doomsday. I'm trying to sell you a milkshake when the building is on fire. So yeah. how do you show a better future and how do you guide the conversation from doomsday to a better tomorrow? So by, you know, empathy, like you cannot completely negate the customer emotions, but how do you very respectfully engage, share examples of what other customers are doing and uh, portray optimism, energy, encouragement. So very, very consultative, uh, but in a very empathetic manner without trying to sound like you're someone who's Mr. Know-it-all. So these are very soft nuances which we are encouraging people to do. And uh, I personally think you can do classroom training for sales uh, and you can do web-based training, but there is no substitute for on-deal or on-call training. And all the managers in the team, all the leaders in the sales team, have to become trainers. That's the best way to develop sales teams. Uh, and it's all about details. So we are telling all the teams that 70 to 80% of the sales call is about the preparation, researching on the prospect, uh, going on Twitter, going on LinkedIn, finding out what are they sharing, what are they liking, what are they engaging with. And that 70% of the preparation is going to result in success. So it's not that one hour call, it's the four hours, three hours you spend before the call preparing. That's never yeah. important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, Bharat, how different is it for you? Or is it, uh, uh, I mean, usually... Sorry. Yeah, Bharat. I think Apu hit the nail on the head. One is, one is more, first thing is motivation. Everybody is kind of pessimistic about everything. One, you have to be motivated as a sales leader. Second is, uh, as Apuva said, uh, research, research, research. A, you could say on uh, various, whether they're doing any campaigns, whether they're actually, uh, industry is growing. And uh, the third aspect is to keep yourself physically very fit so that it helps in conveying the message. Uh, whether it's your body language, whether it's your positive attitude. So that actually conveys. And of course, empathetic listening has to be one of the uh, ways that you, you as a sales leader need to be trained so that you don't talk too much, but you listen more. Okay. All right, cool. So now before uh, we move to the, the Q&A, there are a few questions here that, that we have from the audience. One, I had... Uh, Two quick questions for all of you. Uh, one, uh, one thing that you would change in, in yourself as a sales professional, not as a sales leader, because as a sales leader, we do uh, have changed a lot in our approach. And of course, uh, but as a sales professional, ourselves, if, if I was selling as an individual contributor, what is that one thing I would want to, to change in myself now? Uh, 
I don't think it's it's about changing. I think it's what you um, it's what you prioritize, and you know I, I, the guys just hit hit this one and they spoke about it a lot. But if you're going to pick up the phone or, or send an email to someone who works at a media and publishing business or in a travel industry, whatever the industry may be, understand the situation, read their, their, you know, their current um, financials front to cover, understand the CEO strategy, understand the trends that are happening in the industry and understand how you can help them solve that problem. So you go with an opinion and you go with the perspective. There's nothing worse than picking up the phone and just trying to hit a, hit a number saying, oh, I booked a meeting, you know, so it wouldn't be about changing. It would be about prioritize um, adding value in every conversation you have with someone, because right now um, is the time for those people to shine and for the yeah. phonies who are just literally there to, to, to pick up a phone and dial and book a meeting to fade into the background. So that, that's what I would do. Right, Apu's. You know, one thing which I'm trying to change about myself is uh, I'm trying to be more fit. I think uh, pre-COVID times, I was on the road three and a half weeks a month. So one day in Jakarta, second in Tokyo, third in Dubai. And uh, it's been like that for almost 20 years. So I'm trying to use this time to become more disciplined so that even when things become normal, I continue with my discipline. We always say that all it takes is 20, 22 days to create a habit. So I've been trying to join the 5 a.m. club. So get up at 5, go for a run, picking up cycling. Uh, and that's a massive change for me because, you know, as business development leaders, sales leaders, commercial people, you know, our lives are always very interesting, very challenging. And... Uh, there is, you know, all kinds of pressure which a normal salesperson goes through. So you can only extend your life as a business development commercial leader and you can do great things for your company and your team if you are very fit. So that's what I'm trying to change about myself. Great, great. Bharat, what about you? I think I would second uh, Apoorva. Uh, last three months have been a blessing in disguise. Uh, I have actually become, you could say, seven kilos lighter and uh, have become very fit when compared to you could say March of uh, March 10th to June 10th. So that has been one of the changes and uh, I foresee in the future to probably look at a more consultative approach, look at asking more open-ended questions uh, and, and listen more. Right. Great tips there. I'm now moving on to an honest confession. You miss traveling, business travel? I do. Completely. I can't, you know, wait to get out, catch a flight, go meet customers, uh, play a round of golf with them, take them out for drinks. I think I miss the adrenaline of travel. How about you, Billy? <laughs> I uh, lived a very similar lifestyle, mate. I, I was on a, fl on a flight um, a lot. Um, and having two kids under three, I'm quite comfortable being home um, with the kids. However, you know, um, some, of the, uh, some of the things that Apurva was, Apurva was talking about before around coming to the Yarra Valley and um, hot air ballooning and taking clients out, I definitely miss the, the banter and the camaraderie. Um, and I think a, a, a business flight sometime soon will be on the, on the agenda the moment we can open up the borders. <laughs> yeah, but pretty much same thing for everyone. Uh, but I'm sure. uh, I do, Except I for do. commuting in Bangalore traffic, everything else could you? Bharat is quickly checking around whether his family is around or not before he answers that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do miss the travel and of course the stadium experience. Uh, Nothing, nothing, nothing comes close to it. Uh, I do miss a lot because you could say that uh, crowd experience, which you actually could listen to and feel the energy. If you go to a Chinna Swami Stadium or let's say a Wankhede Stadium in Mumbai, of course we do. So we hope to see whether the IPL would happen in India with probably open audiences. 
not closed stadiums. All right. So you just dropped the hint. Thanks. Thanks for that, Bharat. All right. So uh, now I think uh, we'll uh, quickly take up the question that I have. Uh, so one, and I'll start in that order. Uh, one question is, uh, as salespersons and marketers, we are used to storytelling in person. Suddenly there is a shift to digital. So how do we as sales leaders embrace this change? Would you still prefer your team going out, traveling, meeting the clients, or you will now filter or, or qualify accordingly? Billy has answered. Uh, and I yeah, need his yeah. answer. Yeah. I can explain Story that if you like. Yeah, I'll read it out. Storytelling can still be effective through digital. We use a screen mirroring technologies and a simple method methodology called demo to win. Yeah, um, you, want, you want to tell us quickly more about it? Yeah, I mean, you can still very you can still run effective discovery calls through through Zoom, um, and we've found that recently through getting people on a call, um, it's actually been a lot easier. So we're having a lot of open conversations, direct conversations. Everyone's you know very flexible um, with where they're at. Um, and then when we do run storytelling or presentations that are driving business value, we use either some pretty nifty screen mirroring technologies. So you can still show what you're trying to show on your screen, but highlight certain areas. So it's a little bit more um, visual. And we use a philosophy called or methodology called demo to win. So the philosophy behind it is anything that you're going to be demonstrating, you need to tell the customer what you're going to show them. You need to show them an example of it and then you need to tell them why it's important. So you're circling back and it's just a form of validation and making sure that they're aware that it's going to solve the objective that they told you in that discovery call. But you can still run, a, while face-to-face -face is always better, I feel like these virtual calls are very much more structured and you're just, you're getting a lot more people to attend. Yeah, good point there, Billy. Yeah, Purva, you have something uh, to yeah, share with us. I think uh, when you do in-person storytelling, you engage almost three, four, five senses. And virtually, it's just two senses. So you need to basically take your game up a couple of notches. It's harder to hit the sweet spot in the cricket bat. <laughs> but uh, I think what you need to do is uh, really, really be very thoughtful and uh, be very creative in the way you do sales calls. Like, what can you tell the client which he or she has never heard earlier? Because they are meeting a lot of vendors every day who are trying to reach them on LinkedIn, emails, messages, WhatsApp. Uh, and, you know, WhatsApps and LinkedIn emails from being intrusive uh, have downward become unimaginably intrusive now because that's the only way which vendors can reach across to you. It's almost like you're sitting in your living room, which is your laptop and you have 15 salespeople all around you trying to sell you. Imagine the cacophony. Uh, and if you imagine that it makes you become far more thoughtful mm -hmm. about your customer. And I think the trick is to, in every sales call, tell him or her, one remarkable thing, which they don't forget. Uh, you, you have to have a single sales objective for the call. Uh, the call can't be about trying to get four or five things done. So I think prioritization of the sales message in the call has never been more important and telling it in a very interesting, remarkable fashion so that the customer remembers it, appreciates it and goes and passes that message to five, six people. Uh, my industry is enterprise sales. We do B2B sales. Uh, we work with large corporations. Most of the decision making is actually done by committees and a group of people rather than one individual people. So how do you actually uh, tell an interesting part of the story in a manner in which the customer remembers it and shares it has become very critical. All right, great. Bharat, uh, would you uh, want to add or uh, there are more questions we can uh, Yeah, we can up. take more questions. Okay, so then uh, we'll start with you on this one. Uh, uh, 
you know there's a question which says uh, marketing has always been a mix of brand building and sales support so one part of the table says it's ideal time to rebuild the brand the other says let's just go out and sell you know so which one like what do you think and uh right now i think it's uh, you could say it tilts more towards brand building and being more empathetic on one side uh, rather than hardcore selling so as of now in the present environment it is better to look at brand building as billy pointed out uh, very insightful uh, things that they did so look at things like that and uh, once the environment is much better you could perhaps look back into you could say increasing the percentage of selling it right now it could be probably 80 20 and post probably post covid when once things are better you could look at increasing the sales cool so it's like uh, uh while closure is is extremely important for all of us to get the business but it's not uh, that something that we should be only focusing upon i mean you know throughout the conversation that's what we have been <clears throat> talking about and sharing our thoughts around it building that uh, relationship being understanding uh, showing empathy you know being uh, uh, involved in that uh, discovery stage rather than coming to closure is a is a general priority for all good sales leaders i would say uh there is uh, uh there is an interesting question uh, very relevant uh so when the customers in today's date or prospects they start to ask for free services or discounted services as a sales rep uh, how do we negotiate this and this is a very practical question we all face it today uh how yeah. do we yeah. we've we've just had that it's common um if you're if they're an existing customer and they're saying like we've had lots of clients say to us um in particular you know travel and hospo um we can't reach our commitment of where we're at today and we want to do right by them so we are finding ways to negotiate something that's acceptable because we still need to keep business operating when you've got a a prospect or a customer telling you they want something for free our mantra is quite simple um you know loyalty is a two way street um so we ask for other commitments so okay um we can give it to you for a discounted rate but instead of signing a 12 month contract you'll sign a 24 month contract um oh okay you can have it with a, a discount but we want you to pay up front um because that means we can bank the revenue you've just got to be strategic as to how you commercialize the model so it's still beneficial for both parties I've never been a fan for giving someone something for free because they don't appreciate it <laughs> and they just expect it yeah. all the time so you're training them to want something for free so no that's a no go yeah okay uh, i think that's uh, very insightful and pretty uh, uh, relevant for all of us because uh, we do face it every week uh, apur we want to add something or we have another question Yeah, so the way we look at discounts is it's a reality, uh, and you know the request could be discounts or it could be uh, changing the payment terms and giving them more flexibility, uh, or it could be freezing the contract for some time. The request could be in many forms. The first is to understand the client situation, understand is the business really impacted, or are some clients being opportunistic in asking you for that. because some countries are still open work is still happening the second is to share with the client that we are also going through a difficult time and ultimately it's a part where both have to support each other to win uh, and then you know as billy mentioned uh, basically figure out what can you give in return if you are giving the discount so can you take the contract term from one year to three years term with no termination for convenience uh, can you put a cpi Uh, or a cola inside the contract which automatically increases the price by uh, the wpi index by 5 to 6% every year uh, can you do vendor displacement 
if the client was working with two three vendors can you take over all the work so basically the trick is to figure out how do you create a win win for both your company and the client and don't make it a one way street yeah <clears throat> completely agree with you apul uh so one last question and then we can wrap up uh, uh this is uh, coming from vinay where he is asking that uh, you know today uh, fmcg brands are uh, high on sales some of the categories so how can a sales guy reach out to the marketing leaders or the decision makers uh uh for selling or showing them the value and uh, uh they must be busy they must be occupied they have their own priorities is it a safe time for them to replace a technology will they have this as a priority or how do you look at it the way i think of it vijay is all of us whether it's bharat you me billy and any of the 90 odd sales people who are on the call uh doesn't matter what product category or service category you are in ultimately there are three things which we can do one is you can reduce the cost of the customer's product or service and that's a value the second is you can make him you can help him make more money by your products or services and you know email marketing falls there value added services digital marketing falls there celebrity endorsement falls there and the third thing is how can you reduce his time to market which means how can you help him go to market faster and the fourth is how can you really really help him re-engineer his business model to be very very disruptive and innovative or be a quality leader so basically if you simplify all the things we buy or sell in the world they, they have one of these four use cases they cater to and the trick yeah. you know is to if you can show roi it's very easy to get a call with any board member ceo forget about the ceo so if you want to reach across to any of these fmcg companies and your service can help them uh, gain market share reach out to new customer segments increase the market basket mix which means if i had 10 products and only two were being bought by customer can i increase the market basket mix size uh, it's going to be very very easy to get time yeah yeah look um if you uh, look everything you touched on there was as 100% right those four things that you kind of talk about as um is is that's yeah completely aligned with the way you need to demonstrate value and i think fmcg to your question link i mean i i wish i could have the conversation with you right now but industry trends in fmcg are very very different right now they are reaching um astronomic sales the problem with fmcg is that they do not own the consumer relationship unless they have a direct to consumer channel right they own the brand but they distribute and manu- and 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 sell the brand through retailers through merchants so they they don't necessarily own the relationship with the end consumer and that's the biggest challenge for fmcg brands when you think of a wine business they sell wine through um uh, a woolworths or a coles they are relying on woolworths and coles to sell their products um so how can you build a relationship with the end customer if you can help um fmcg brands know their customer add value to the buying process and and repurch and get them to repurchase with them then you've got a reason for an fmcg brand to speak with you if you can't then you're just adding noise to their inbox Bharat, any specific observation you would have in dealing with FMCG? Uh, oh, sorry. FMCG, FMCG usually have celebrity endorsement as part of their long-term game, and considering the kind of uh, high turnover sales that they have achieved, they definitely have a lot more marketing dollars to spend with a celebrity endorsement, and be as uh, Apoorva just mentioned, if if any product or service can solve those four product four ideas it definitely falls into their long term as well as short term thinking and especially now if they can look at uh, point of sales as one of the primary uh, problems that they can solve then 
it is a definite time to actually approach them. Agree, agree. Well, I think well with it died and it's to end sharp. Uh, so must be ending this uh, by definitely thanking all of you, the speakers, the attendees uh, on a weekday. Really appreciate guys. I hope you found it good enough. We'll continue the series. Feel free to connect with any of us directly on LinkedIn or Twitter. Uh, more than happy to share our experiences as uh, sales professionals. Thank you and have a good day and a good week. Bye-bye. Thank you, Vijayan, Billy, Bharat, and all the audience. Uh, Vijayan, you're a fantastic host, and thank you for organizing it. Thank Thanks. you, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.